Good evening, Internet. Welcome back to another night of Strange and Scary Games. Tonight we are hopefully finishing up uh, Dread Delusion. It has been quite a long time. Training room, workshop, quarters. Uh, it has been quite a long journey, and I am hoping that tonight is going to be the end of it. Uh, how do I get out of here? Nolakolos has commandeered the cradle, an ancient Imperian craft that harbors a powerful entity. No vessel can pierce its protective shielding, so you must obtain an airship and explore the distant islands for the means to upgrade the cutter. Still having trouble cursing? Alas, I fear the muse of filth has forsaken me for good. But enough of that. Are you bothering me for a purpose, or do you truly value your time so cheaply as to spend it on booming on blooming chit chat? Uh The Clockwork Exoskeleton is new. It helps you walk. My, how observant you are. In fact, ambulatory support is merely one of its functions. The first incarnation was rather less powerful, but to be fair, I was rather smaller. I expect you want the whole story. After all, it is so very inspirational. <clears throat> Actually, one moment, if you please. I wish to, that is, it behooves me, dash it all. Let's not prevaricate about the, the bush. You were quite correct to scold me back in the kingdom. The word for what I was doing was wallowing, specifically in childish rage and self-pity. We all have our bad days. Hmm. Yes, quite. Very good. Well, what are you waiting for? A medal? Bog off before you break something expensive. Uh. Is the fast travel still up here? Can I use the fast travel to get out of here? I don't know if you guys can see it. I don't think you can. Hold on. So I have this curse that we picked up in the, um, the Underlands. Oh, this is my home. I see. Where is the fast travel? I don't think I want to be here. I'm not entirely sure where it wants us to go. I have another assignment for you. This one is more of a more delicate nature. As you have no doubt noticed, there are tensions between this tribunal and the wider union. Both the Navy and my Inquisition superiors have begun to question my loyalty to the cause. So they have asked me to issue a command they know I will, fi uh, they know I will find disagreeable. There is a small house in the western forest of Hallowshire where our agents have stumbled upon a certain godlet. This tiny, stunted god would be of little significance, only my superiors know that in years past it was in my care, that I was fond of the thing. This is not the time to arouse their suspicions. You must go to the godlet, you must slay it on my orders, and then we will continue as normal. Thank you, Confessor. Remember, you will find 
You will find it in the western forest of Hellishire. Take this void scalpel. Only void still can harm a god. Use it to slit its throat. Okay, I'm still confused about how I'm supposed to get down there. This just opens out here. Does this do anything? Okay. Okay, we're back. There we go. <clears throat> Let's get over to Hallishire. Actually, I want to go talk to the people in uh, Quill. We have so much stamina now. Is it you? I think it's you. Ah, you're back. I suppose I have a few minutes to talk. You won't have to worry about the giant Nautilop anymore. Oh, really? Why, this is splendid news. Please tell me the details. Nautilop was an illusion, nothing more. Oh, oh my. Really? I can't believe I didn't think of that. So the town is saved? We're not going to burn alive? Hurrah. Anyway, please take this reward. Uh, settle the cell swords. Along with my heartfelt thanks, you've done Quill a fine service today. Alright, we've done that. Greetings, Traveler. Welcome to the uh, the Quill part of the Wing Merchants Guild. I'm the local harbor master. How can I help you? I want to purchase a ship, and I have a writ of permission right here. Well, it looks like you really do have permission to buy a ship, but all we have is a small cog, and that'll set you back some 200 coin. Okay, I'll take it. All right. Aye, aye, Sky Captain. First thing, take this deed to your airship. It's legal proof of ownership, ownership, so don't lose it. Next, I'll arrange for the cog to be brought to this port. You should be able to see it docked at the jetty outside when we're done here. Now, if you have this sort of permission, I assume you're well-versed in the nuances of sailing and the intricacies of union trade law, or the polymaths would never have approved you. But just in case, do you have any questions? Uh, I'll figure it out as I go, right? Uh, any airship dock. Every dock also has an airship upgrade station. You can also link or almost anywhere in the world. Just stop your vessel. If you're courageous or foolhardy enough, you can climb down the chain to get to the ground level. When you're ready to depart, climb back up again. And remember that if you ever lose track of where your airship is, you can recall it to any air, uh, airship upgrade station. Ship's anchor can't be lowered here. Oh, this is cool. Down, up. Right, where are we going? Oh, we have a delusion. Um, is 
Is there anything we were lacking in? This is really cool. I like this a lot. I'm going the wrong way. to the west of Hellershire, right? Western Forest of Hellshire. Small house in the Western Forest of Hellshire. Up. Uh, okay. Um, I do wish that you could open the map. While you were steering. Head back towards that tree. right here. Not you. Okay, cool. So then that's north. We see that there's a door that we can open. Fine or so this is not the place, so let's try south. to get over there. I'll 
I'll take that. Nothing in the tree. Uh, can't get up this way. Where am I? Right there. Can I use the ship to get up there? Where's my ship? Where's that dragon? That's really cool. All right. Is it over here? Nope, that's the one that I went to. Ah, I can't see. Tree. Foliage. Foliage. Okay. Need to go down. There. Uh, this looks like a mine. Really? Really? Take that. Door needs a key. Is this the right house? It seems like it. Why was I not given a key for this? Is it this one? Uh, 
Uh, where is it? Uh, I'm confused now. Where did that house disappear to? Oh my god. Am I tripping? Did you guys not see a house? Yeah, small house right there. Let me come down here. Okay, there it is. Unlocks the dilapidator, uh, dilapidated manor at the foot of the great castle in Hallishire. Is that the one that we were looking for? Where's the great castle? I suppose we can go try it. I mean, screw it back. Okay. Not there. No. Oh. All right. I don't know where we're going. been there, right? Down. I think that that's just the thing for the thing. If you know what I mean. Oh my god. Do we just go back? Uh, 
Where are the distant islands? Are those the distant islands? One more. What she got? I have sick farm. This way. I was afraid he was going to hit me. Shuriken. Door needs a key. Seems to be the theme of these uh, unreachable spots. What are you? Are you anything? You're a Desvale. I don't know that we ever figured out what to do with the Desvale. I'm sure I could try crafting it. Oh, there's another chest over here. Didn't even see it. <laughs> Need 75 charm to talk your way in. Great Ring of Mana. Okay. Um, 
Not seeing any other way to get in unless we can go in on the top. Doesn't look like. Hmm. Where are we? Back there. Those are connected. That one's not connected. We could try going over there. That one's not connected. Yeah, that one is connected. Okay. So let's try going there. I vaguely remember uh, the confessor saying something like, you need to go to the, the, you need to go to the distant isles. But I don't remember where she said exactly. map has been updated. Let's try here. We've already been here, haven't we? Was this part of the Imbirian's quest? I think it was. Yes, this is all looking very familiar. Right to hmm. uh, we could try going north. We have a thing to sell. True North, use a compass. Oh, I didn't realize we could do that.
We already went there. What about over here? Is this anything? Hey there. It's gonna be really embarrassing if this is nothing and I just murdered that thing for no reason. It's looking like this is nothing. needs a key. Of course it does. Every fucking thing needs a key now. So that's the ship. That's where he found the hand. Oh, down, 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 down. Uh, that we need a key for. That's something. Isn't that the Duchess's place? Yeah, that's just the Duchess's thing, isn't it? Careful, careful. Haven't we been here before? How have I not gotten that map before? Um. 
I'm not certain where it wants us to go. Don't need a key, that's good. Are we back in Lunacid? Is this the vampire castle? Bye, please. Back in Hallowshire. Uh, where's my stamina potion? from the other side. Pegath is an old god with followers stretching back throughout the ages. Many of the ancient temples are said to still hold undisturbed treasure treasures. Gradually restores health over time. It's a spell. Okay. Take those. How is this door barred from both sides? and hit it. Ring of the snake renders the wearer immune to poison. Is it this one up here? Do we go up?
I think something's shooting at us. Hi there. Greetings, most venerable friend. The Wiccan Coven of the Worm has been watching you for some time, and we are most pleased. By all means, make yourself at home in this place. It is reserved on only for those loyal to our cause. The grimoire over there will prove a great boon to your lore skill. You may also rest in the bed downstairs and help yourself to whatever items you find here. Uh, we've gained temporary lore. Can rest here. Why are the Wiccans friendly to us all of a sudden? I thought that the Wiccans didn't like us. I think that should have counted, but okay. I'll take it. Take the goblet, take the death sail. I'm about to go back to, uh, what's her name, the confessor, and ask her what we're supposed to be doing again. Time. On Pegath. Excuse me. Not there, not there, not there. Uh. 
Looks like there should be something up there, but I didn't see anything when we were over there. Looks like there should be something down there as well. Wait a second. That is inconvenient. Alright, where are you? here. Stabby, stabby. That's gone. So how do we get around to it? Guard from the other side. Wasn't there a door over here? I feel like we just did this recently. There it is, yeah. So we go through here. We go over here. We go up here. Find it in the western forest of Halshire. Ancient and buried skycraft, a phantom vessel able to break any barrier or evade any pursuit, said to be wrecked on the world run, never to be seen again. For the crashed vessel without success, scryers find nothing or suffer apoplexy. A Union Navy considers it merely a myth. Ross believes otherwise. There are rumors of a particular island with an Amerian wreck that has been drifting through the Sky Realms. That very island has strayed into the Oneric Isles. Search the most distant islands in the Oneric Isles and find whatever power it is that hides the wreck from scrying mines. Then you might slip past the Navy blockade. <sighs> that didn't give me any information.
just leads there. Hello, thank you. There's nothing under our ship. Why is the, um, why are we clipping into the ceiling here? Is that supposed to happen? Pro Shop Pyramid. Dragon Friend. Where we found the hand. What's down here? Is this the starting area? That's the great mushroom, okay. It's the great mushroom, Charlie Brown. That's the shipwreck. Already been there. It's the graveyard. faster.
Are we moving at all? I don't know that we're moving. Can I just not go down there? What are those? Where are we? There we are. That's north, that's east. would love a little bit more direction in this part of the game. That's not the direction I went at all. Set real quick. This looks promising, okay. Where are we? Uh, where are we? Oh. Not on the map, that's why. Are you a dead god? You are a dead god, I think. Do you require a key? Door needs a key. Hi, please. Thank you. 
What are you guarding? Ghost wine. What do ghosts have to whine about? But I'm shooting flies at us. Oh, we're about to die. These guys hurt. There's another cave we haven't explored too. And a throwing knife. I'm assuming you're a machine built to kill God. Gods forgive me. Gods focus, focus. Can a god forgive you if you killed it? Can, it? can you forgive a god if it kills you? Can a god kill you if you forgive it? Can you forgive a god if, it, if you kill it? Can you kill a god if you forgive it? No. Gods, no. Stop thinking about gods. Gods, can you... White Moonlight Butterfly. Didn't we find a thing in the swamp that was like, uh, Once you've given up your human form, you can wear a mask or something like that. But then we needed like an obscenely high charm value to get past it or something. I don't even remember.
I have end of the week work brain. I want to go home. 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 God War Pendant, a little silver pendant marked with one of the Union's early symbols. It seems to have belonged to Cornelius of the Grace, uh, Grace Guards. The fastener is broken, so it cannot be worn. It surely has sentimental values to someone. Uh, I'm assuming that that has to go back to the dude. Attack, please. Thank you. Glimmer of delusion. Eat. Take the potion. How do you change? There we go. Disagree. All right. Am I actually going to gain anything from doing the rest of this place, or am I just doing it for fun? And by fun, I mean dying immediately. spot. Stabby, stabby. There's a spell, except we're not using spells, so it doesn't really matter. Nothing that way. Another ghost.
that gives us that. We're about to lose our lore buff. I like that we have 17 out of 13 lockpicks. This is a very cool area. I'm a little afraid that I'm not getting much from it though. Activated elsewhere. Lockpicks over there. skill is too low.
pie, please. Thank you. Hello there. I'll take that. And that. And that. And that. And that. Thank you for your business. Rusty key with scrap cloth torn from the God Warrior banner still tied around it. So what does that give us? He still hurts. All right. I feel like we're having better, um, I feel like we're having better, uh, luck with the lock picks without the lock picking hats. I don't know what that's about. Take it. Does this take us back here? Embraced a delusion. All right, let's do that. Um, let's let's start getting might. Inogen, right? Bardolf said you would have more work for me. Not bad. When I saw you walking off with it, I was sure you'd be hung in, up in some prison by the end of the day. Those things are really illegal, you know. Anyway, Bardolf told me to give you another job, so speak to me again when you're ready. Stamina pot. It's the Ratways from um, Skyrim. Where was that old guy? I 
I have something for you. Give pendant. Drangorg is silent for a moment, reaching out tentatively, then drawing back, not ready to start affect it. Is that... Did you... He coughs, producing a particularly spectacular flare-up from his pipe and attempts to compose himself. Well, I never thought I would see that again, but you've done a kind thing for an old grease guard. Here, take this. Don't open it here. Not where any old Inquisitor could see. That's void or Never built anything with it. Never killed anything with it, either. And now I never will. But that's what I did for all the gods. That and our own blood and guts. Little bit of the stuff I kept back for myself at the end of the war. Though I can't imagine why. Perhaps to remember it by. But now I have this. Drangorg is clasping the pendant tightly as he slides a package across to you. Seems like a good time to leave the old man to his thoughts. Goodbye, Lieutenant Artificer. Alright, so we did that. Cool. Um, can we do this? Not here. Where's the... there. Uh, we can make a void sword. 25... Masterwork, uh, well-tempered blade. Masterwork forged from void ore, the legendary metal that absorbs light and nullifies the effects of magic. A fearsome weapon indeed, although staring at the blade for too long is said to be dangerous. offer you a seat, but these chairs are terribly expensive. I presume you hear about a job offering. Thought as much, your attire is certainly suited for the physical labor of the task. Job is to locate a merchant vessel, the Golden Typhus, and retrieve its cargo. It's a magnificent ship made with the strongest lundal oak, so I can't imagine that it could have been shipwrecked. Its captain is, uh, its captain is none other than Walter Cecil, who has charted many of the apostatic union's most distant islands as known for his character. Mutiny, then, is not a possibility. Course, a course was plotted by the Pegathian ruins south of Hallow. The Typhus should have never should have returned a week ago. I'm begging, I'm beginning to worry. The ship and the crew are irrelevant. Only the cargo matters. Return it to me, and I will reward you handsomely. I see something in there. What do I see? This is where I wanted to go. Ah, oh, welcome. This room is normally reserved for dignitaries visiting uh, from Riova, but I understand the polymath has made an exception on account of your services to the Apostatic Union. The Enchanted Mask over there will grant a boon to your charm skill, should you require it. You may also help yourself to the amenities or rest in the bed over there. Just, would you please, uh, remove your most elegant footwear? We wouldn't want to get mud all over the furnishings now, would we? So we have a free bed here. Are you just going to stand there and watch me sleep? Weirdo. Hell, peasant, are you in need of work? God shells have been found in the region. They contain godlets. So we had six godlets, I think. Do you have anything else?
I'm not sure where to go. Okay, there's something else up there. Let's go check there. Alright, so I'm really not seeing anything. It looks like we're hitting the edge of the world map. So not there. over here, weren't we? I believe that was just a cave. This looks promising. I was worried that we were going to be shut out of it. The Rasmussen Spear. To face fell in the cradle, you'll need to upgrade the cutter with a device that can pierce its powerful force fields. You found a, des a desert island to the south of the Oniaric Isles, where an ancient Imbirian ship has run aground. Could this be what you're searching for? I hope so. Oh, hold on. There we go. Sealed by a device. Lore skill is too low. Did we take off the thing that lets us see the th uh, other things? You guys have cool design. Barred from the other side. It's just a texture.
Hello? Large breaker-like switch is set into the console before you. The whole thing and the hut around it seem to have been put together from a haphazard of impressive selection of parts, which are now showing their age. The switch is stiff, moving only with a grinding sound. When it thuds back into the device, there is no immediate change anywhere around you. Alright. So we need to get up there somehow, it looks like. Not through here, it looks like. Hypnotic brooch. It seems to be just a little knot of twigs and faded flowers until you find you can't look away from it, entranced by its appearance. Others find it enticing too and will fall under the entice under your entice spell for longer than usual. What was the update? You found a desert island. Uh, you have flicked two switches that have disabled the rec security system. You should search inside. How do I get inside though? Thing. Doesn't look like it. I'll take you.
Whiffed one, that's all right. Bastard. Not supposed to hit me. I hit you, that's how this works. I hit you and then you die. This appears to be the path. Hello there. The face that peers through a straggle of hair is a picture of incomprehension and suspicion, suddenly breaking into an unexpected gap to smile of amazement. Come closer there. I'm hardly going to kill the first conversation partner I've had in 30 years. Let me look at you. You are real, aren't you? Not another entropic discharge of the sphere. Uh, I'm real. Are you? Some days, some years, I wonder. But let's assume I am. My name is Rasmussen. As he comes closer, you can see that Rasmussen's clothing, ragged as it is, was once a resplendent set of old and bearing robes, or rather mini sets, now seemingly all patched and darned together into a single bizarre ensemble. Ah, uh, you really are real. I was so sure we were all going to die out before anyone came back. Who exactly is dying out? We, the Rasmussen clan, my ancestors, the one who built the ship you've no doubt spotted right on top of us here. I thought we were all going to die out before anyone came back. I'm looking for an engine, a sphere, I was told. You know. You know about it. Knowledge still endures. Yes. Yes, indeed. I should ask how you found me, I suppose, but I have so many more interesting questions, so many things I've heard about the world out there. My grandfather told me you all live inside giant mushrooms. Don't they get a bit smelly? Do you still have snakes? I always wanted to pet snake. But where are my manners? Excuse me. It's been 30 years since I needed them. My questions can wait. You must have questions for me. I was trying to explain to you, wasn't I? This is, was, is our home. It was never meant to be, but the Rasmussen's, we... Never mind all that. Tell me about the engine. Ah, right. Yes, I suppose. I suppose that's to be expected. Uh, the engine is... It, uh, the engine was, is... Revolutionary. It still works, you know. I'm the only one maintaining it now, but I don't know what I'm maintaining it for anymore. In any case, the engine works. It's up there, up in the wreck of the ship. Though without anything to do, it just puts out more and more energy. But you could remove it if you wanted to. Uh, that's what you came for, isn't it? Don't worry. I know you didn't come here just to listen to me. The sphere is up above, but you won't be able to reach it just like that. It puts out too much energy to get close to it. But there's a way to shut it off. Two switches elsewhere on the island, separate from each other. Fail safes. If you can switch them both, the sphere will disconnect. You'll be able to get it out. Right, off I go then. I, yes, off you go. Only come back one more time, won't you, before you leave? We have a friend. Where are we? They said it was to the south. They don't see us. Weird. That's that. Oh, there we are. Okay. So it's like the far right corner. Southeast. Part from the other side. Come on. Sealed by an unseen device. Hmm. 
I was waiting for our lore skill to be too low. Something has changed. I'm assuming we can get in that door now. Yes, indeed. Do I want to go up? Are you the sphere? The Rasmussen Sphere. To face fell in the cradle, you'll need to upgrade the cutter. On the island, you found an Iberian Rasmussen Sphere, uh, which should allow you the cutter to by uh, bypass the cradle's protective force field. You should return to the High Confessor with what you found. Uh, that goes back down. Come on. Clockwork ore, so we can upgrade one of our other weapons now. Come on. Is there anything else down there? It doesn't look like it. So, let's go talk to our friend. done. You don't need to tell me. I can feel it. Or rather, I can't feel it. Can't feel the energy anymore. Hmm. Well done. That damn thing has sat in one place for centuries. Time for it to fly again. Time for it to do what the rest of meant for it to do in the first place. I can take you with me. Take you off this island. Ah! And what would I do then? There's nothing for me out there. I hope to live long enough for someone to come with a few kind words for me, and they have. That's enough for me. Leave me here, and I'll join my ancestors soon enough. Go. Use it well. Goodbye to you, then. Fly fast. Remember the rest I won't forget you. All right, we need to get back to our ship. Where is our ship? Let's touch the thing. Oh, 
Where are we? Dragon friend. Good landing. Ah, so it seems as though you have secured all the, all the necessary components, Confessor. Basalt informs me that the cutter is ready. This will be your final mission, for after this I will declare your penance fulfilled. You will be free to roam the Sky Realms once more. But I wanted to offer you a place here in this tribunal, if you wish to serve the Inquisition alongside me. I'd rather find my own path. I respect your wishes, Confessor. Perhaps I would do the same, were I not bound to this coffin. But, back to the task at hand, you will assemble your strike team for the final assignment. You will approach the cradle and the cutter, and fight your way through Vela's defenses. We've seen no sign of aberrant behavior from the cradle, so we can only assume that Vela has not yet awakened the creature within. You must kill her before she can do any harm. Just get to the cutter, just get the cutter docked at the cradle, and the rest of your team will begin the assault. Expect fierce resistance. Sacrifices may be necessary. We may not all meet again. But know this, I have come to respect you, Confessor. I trust that when it comes to it, you will do the right thing. Ah, Confessor, good of you to join us. So here we are at last. The interval is nearly over. The curtains are soon to open. Everything is in place for the final act. Let's just hope I can remember my lines. You'll do fine, Frost. After all, we've rehearsed plenty. Nevertheless, a little stage fright is only natural. This is the confrontation I've been running from all along. This uh, is what I became Horus to escape. You missed the is. Yet I am finding that the fear is less... Biting than before, it feels calming somehow, to last be walking towards my troubles, at last, uh, with a firm resolve. Funny how long we resist the simplest lessons. Confessor, do you remember our first meeting? Lately, I found myself turning it over in my brain. At the time, you persuaded me that the angel's promise was a mirage, that a better world can only be built one brick at a time. Those were wise words. The Dark Stars could have bettered so many lives with all the power and treasure we had attained. If we'd done the hard work and made the hard choices. Instead, we took the easy path, following our leader into damnation for a prize that could absolve any crime. But... Things are different now, don't you see? The cradle has risen. The stable door has been blown off its bally hinges. Everything the Clockwork Kingdom ever tried was mere child's play compared to the angel. This is it. The real deal. And now that we're on the precipice, I find I cannot turn my back. It's all Horace's fault, I'm afraid. His visions were so good because he still had hope. Hope that every person could be redeemed. That love really was more powerful than despair. When you reawakened my old self, that hope didn't die. It stayed with me, infectious, all mixed up together with everything I've seen and done. So you see, I have to believe that Horace wasn't wrong to hope. I mean that literally, I have no choice but to believe, for Sam and my family and everyone I've ever loved. Honestly, I have no idea what I'll do once we reach the angel. 
Refreshing, refreshingly honest, Confessor. Very well. You improvise and I will react. If it transpires that we are cast as foes, let us play our parts with gusto. I'm going to flipping regret all of this, aren't I? Orlaith looks agitated, shifting in her armor. You know, I faced up to the impossible odds before, always, test always bested them. So why do I feel so goddamned nervous? I guess I've always looked up to Vela. She saved me more times than I can count. So even though I know this is the right thing to do, my stomach's still churning. Listen, Confessor, when we met, you told me you'd, we'd finish what I started, the mutiny against Vela, and stop her before she does the unthinkable. Do you stand by that? Do you really think we can do this? I've seen you fight. Vela doesn't stand a chance. I appreciate your confidence in me, Confessor. You know, I've never felt like I've belonged anywhere. Being born from a glass tube will do that to you. Even those first few years with Vela, when we thought we were really making a difference, it was still Vela's dream we were chasing, you know? But now, I think I finally know what my purpose is, to stop the evils of my ancestors from ever being repeated. Or die trying. For better or worse, that's thanks to you, Confessor. So I suppose I just wanted to say, thank you. My pleasure, Orlaith. Ever since we saw it, I've been thinking of that angel. I've long read of such ominous entities drifting in the void beyond reality, but until now they were entirely theoretical. But seeing such a creature in the flesh, I could feel its incongruity, its vast contradiction, like a thorn in my brain. With something so alien to this world, maybe Vela really can bend reality to her will. Oh, Confessor, my apologies. I was lost in thought. It's that angel. I've long read of such entities drifting in the void beyond reality, but until now they were entirely theoretical. For the, all the complexities of our cipher art, we have only the smallest understanding of the void. Confessor, you told me that Vela could grant the Endless a true death if her heaven prevails. I've been thinking on this a great deal these past few days. It's ironic that her hunt for immortality could grant my people the dreamless slumber many of them crave. Ironic, but not undesirable. So many years of list listless agony, so many lifetimes, flittered away in a half-life, unable to feel the air in our lungs or the wind in our hair. But... Do you truly mean to aid Vela, or Lath and Basalt, it seems, are set on opposing her? She must be stopped. I understand. Though I'm vexed you would stir such false hope in me, I see what's at stake here. When we reach the castle, I'll keep Vela's main force distracted with the cipher shield. That should give you time to find an alternate entrance. But no matter what, this will be a perilous mission. I've spoken to care and arranged for my daughter's hand to be delivered home if I am to meet a similar fate to hers. Well, this is it. One last daring push into Vela's maelstrom, eh? Only this time I fear there'll be no second chances. It doesn't matter how many times that god of yours can pull you back from the dead. If Vela activates that abomination, it's all over. Unless we can stop her, Vela will either rule the world or end it. Damn that girl for bringing it to this. She could have done great things, you know. Her name could have gone down in history as a savior, not a tyrant. Well, anyway, the cutter's ready to depart. You might want to check with the rest of the crew to see how they're holding up first. But otherwise, use the controls when you're ready. Just make sure you're really ready, eh? Assaulting that cradle is no easy task. This may just be the last thing we ever do. What's the plan when we reach the cradle? The place is a fortress, too risky for a head-on assault. But if the Duchess could distract Vela's entourage with her magic, the rest of you might have a chance. Frost thinks he spotted a back door, some sort of utility pipe, that could be cracked open, giving you and Orlaith away inside. Then Orlaith will head, head straight for Vela and try to stop, try to keep her busy. As for you... Find that angel at all costs. Then, if all goes to plan, we'll meet up at the cradle center, and we can boot that angel back to the void. Piece of cake, eh? All right. Let's do this.
to the cradle. Embark on your final mission. Make a clockwork bow. Can't do any clothes. Right. Well, despite it all, that went pretty smooth, eh? Damn sight better than the last landing, at least. I already know the plan. Once more, I've erected my transpositional supply tent. By all means, use it to stock up, but don't tarry. We must strike quickly now that we're here. Vela's lackeys will come at us in full force, but I'll try to keep them at bay for as long as I can. Once we set off, you must find Frost and help him make his entrance. We're aboard the most important vessel ever constructed, surrounded by the Union Navy, on our way to face Vela Kalos and her captive Eldritch Horror. Careful, Confessor. Anything more dangerous and I might start having fun. Frost is in full flow, seemingly possessed by the ghost of his piratical past. Onward, ladies! No dawdling, no dallying, and no fanning about. Last one to reach the aeration pipe owes us a full and Lee's breakfast. Showtime, Confessor. Break a leg. I really like the characters in this. You guys did a really good job with the characters. Oh, we have unspent delusions. I didn't realize that. They might be able to hit a little bit harder. Don't worry about me, Confessor. I've faced worse odds than this. Just find Frost and get inside that thing. Ow. Imbirian ore. Not what I was looking for, but I'll take it. Hit him. There's Frost. Confessor, you've arrived in the nick of time. Confound these obstinate Imbirians. I'm attempting to halt this aeration turbine to afford our ingress, but it appears there is a failsafe switch somewhere nearby, most likely on the platform beneath here. There's an elevator down nearby. Find that switch, shut it off, and you shall have your door. 
Quickly now, Confessor, let's not miss our cue. Where is the elevator? There's the elevator. Was not as cool as I wanted to be. Bye, please. Cradle salt updated. Something has changed. Is there anything over here? There's something over here. More Imperian ore. Glimmer of delusion. Nothing over here. All right. I feel like it's unfair that I interrupted the animation and he still got the heal. On the other hand, that really shouldn't have hit that robot, so... I suppose we'll call it fair. Side. No, thank you. Your turn now.
Do I get both of them? Oh, nice. Is this the right way to go? I'm assuming that's the right way to go. Let's go to the wrong way first. Okay, that's back the way we came. This looks like it goes up. Treasure? Secrets? I wish there was like a consistent way to guard break rather than just hit him really hard. Take that. No, that wasn't worth it. This looks like a boss fight. I was hoping that if I talked to the, the creature that it would pause the animations and that has not happened. Uh, attack please. What is hitting me? Seems like I hit him and then I get pelted with arrows or something. Are you pelting me with arrows? Is that what's happening? Does it have like hooks that come out of it? Is that what's happening? That one's dead, okay. Hit him. Stop trying to hit him and hit him. Okay, so it's got like scythe attacks. Again. Change weapons, change weapons, please. Thank you. That's better. Did it just heal itself? That's not fair. Okay. 
Only I get to heal myself. Don't heal yourself again, please. Salt. Having gained access to the cradle's main structure, you have managed to defeat the replicated spawn of the angel in combat. Nothing now stands before you. Can be Okay, so this is the end game, I believe. Uh, what? Anything hidden? Now I want to go back and see what I missed in that one room. Vela stands over the lifeless body of her once friend Orlaith, her sword still dripping with blood and her face twisted in fury. You! You should be dead. I stuck my sword into your heart. I saw your body fall. It would have taken a god to stop you from... Oh. Now I get it, Confessor. You really have been following in my footsteps, haven't you? You killed Orlaith? She attacked me. I had no choice. And if it wasn't for you, what's happened to your arm, your face? Merely a byproduct of the unprecedented work we have been doing here. Fay, let's talk about this. No more talk, Confessor. Not after everything you've done. You turned my comrades against me, forcing my hand. Their blood is on your conscience as much as my own. They abandoned your cause long ago, Vela. They were just afraid of real change. None of them tried to assassinate me until you showed up. Get ready, Confessor. I won't let you nor the Inquisition get in the way of what comes next, for the sake of humanity. Don't you mean for the sake of Isabet, your sister? That's what this is really about. How dare you mention her name? You know nothing of her soul, of my family. Isabet was. She was meant more than she meant more than me. She meant more to me than Isabet and my mother burned alive in my father's mansion. That Isabet was taken so young, and I alone should live, speaks plainly of the injustice of this world. Am I wrong for wanting to change that? Now here you are, surrounded by the corpses of your new family. Was it worth it? Was her lace death just? I... They... They betrayed me. If only they had listened instead of... Instead of... I didn't want to kill her. I only meant to... There is another way. Convince Vela Kalos to stand down. Vela's sword drops from her hands and clatters to the floor. Tears stream from her eyes, though she 
uh, betrays not a sob. That's what I always say, isn't it? I didn't want to. They made me do it. I had no choice. Damn you, confessor. Do you have any idea how long never is? Never to see my sister again. Never to hear her stupid little laugh. God damn it, all I ever wanted. When I found that map, it was like a fucking djinn had answered my wish. Do you understand? Like a message from the universe saying, maybe she died so I could save everyone. And at every step since, I've made the same choice. Every principle twisted. Every dead friend. The angel could make it right. So my debt kept growing and growing until... Bela is silent for a long time. When she turns back to you, it is with a despairing smile, her voice cracking with the desperate abandon of confession. I am so deep in blood that I can't even see the surface anymore. Vela gestures hopelessly at the angel. So you win, confessor. The angel will answer to the first mortal who speaks with it. If you think me a fool, then destroy it. Just whatever you do, do it quickly before I change my mind again. Thank you, Vela. What do we do from here? It seems as though some wretched soul spat from the dank prison cell has somehow stumbled into the most fateful moment in living, hist uh, living memory. The angel watches you, stranger. To its incomprehensible mind, you are little more than an insect crawling on shit. And yet here, in this plane of existence, it has no power without one such as you. It is a thing born of the void. It can think and feel only in cipher and lacks the perspective of a mere mortal. To have agency in this place, it must merge with another. This creature defies foresight, stranger. In the threads of prophecy, this moment was, is an abyss through which I cannot see. For years, I thought it was Vela who would stand at the precipice, but now I see that it is you. It's merely a roll of the dice. Many in your position would claim sole responsibility for their successes. I'm glad you have the sense to see otherwise. These islands have long been the home of dreamers and fantasists. Their delusions have seeped into the fabric of the earth, waiting for one to reclaim them. The people here have hung their wishes on your shoulders. Nothing more. But you should do well to remember that your power, all power, is borrowed. We are not but conduits. And now, whether by chance of skill, whether by chance or skill, you hold more power than any before you. The last time this angel was roused, the whole world was destroyed. You could banish it, or you could merge with it, and succeed where those before you failed. What will you do, I wonder? Could this angel cause another world rend? I would like to tell you that the Imbirians, 400 years ago, used the angel with malice and stupidity, so as to doom the world to such fate. But the truth is, nobody truly knows what happened back then, or what could happen now. Vela was certain she could merge with the angel without triggering a syntax cascade. I am not so brazen as to say either way. For someone who has spent her life predicting the future, it is somewhat of a novelty to admit. I have no idea. I have long thought that to change the rules of the cipher to fundamentally alter the very fabric of existence is a sin more shameful than I could imagine. I believe this in my heart when I tried to stop Vela, but her will proved stronger, and in defying her I lost everything I ever held dear. And if I ever truly loved her, can't I also see that she was driven as much by love and beauty as anger and ambition? The truth is, I am no longer a person, just an echo of one. I have no right to interfere with the living. Do as you wish, stranger." Good luck, stranger, if there is such a thing. As you approach the angel, a pressure builds inside your skull until it feels like your head might split in twain. Your body shivers with the nauseating energy. Somehow, you know the angel is inside of you. A needle of pain gouges through your mind. Memories of your childhood, of people and places you knew, all flash before your eyes, wrenched forth by the will of this creature. Is it trying to understand you? More pain, but this time the memories are not of your own. A sensation of limitless possibility, of incomprehensible freedom and unending time envelops you. For just a fraction of a moment, you understand what it means to be truly infinite, to stretch beyond the limits of this reality. You realize the angel is trying to share its experience with you, though much is lost in translation. Why are you here? 
A confusion of sensations flashed through your mind, an embearing vessel invading your life essence, somehow latching onto you, pulling you through layers of reality until you are small, oh so small, and trapped in this cage. You understand somehow that the angel is severely impaired in this world, the limits of time and space, the rules inherent in such a rigid existence, and trap the angel in this corporeal form. You caused the world run, didn't you? What you know of the world run, scraps of history, hearsay, and a pervasive cultural dread rises to the forefront of your mind. A note of confusion flows through you. The angel doesn't seem to be sure, but you understand that, when it was brought here, another tried to merge with it, unsuccessfully. In that moment, a simple cry of pain from either of them could have obliterated this world, just as a human could accidentally trample on a colony of insects. So what happens now? Your body sees with impotence and impatience. Yes, you understand. The angel can do nothing on its own. Not in this reality, not in this body. It's trapped here. It must merge with another, a sentient being from this material plane, if it is to have any agency here. It would need only be a mil- it would need only be a moment, and the angel could separate once more, peeling off from its new form and returning to the void, or could stay and weave a new reality within this one. I think I'm ready to choose. A tingling of anticipations fuses your body. The angel awaits your decision. I want to banish you back to the void. You feel a yearning for something like home for the expanse of the infinite void, but a wave of anxiety hits you. There will be no going back from this decision. All the pity and despair, the tumult and the blood, the cyclical cruelty and the pious theft, all of it will go on alongside whatever joy the people of the Skyrealms can carve from the crooked bow of mere existence. Is that your will? Yes, you must return to the void. Your body is engulfed in a warm tingling that soon becomes a tearing, agonizing pain. Your vision distorts, then seems to blend with your other senses, like your very consciousness is dissolving into water. The angel is barring your mortal essence so that it may leave this reality. Your last coherent thought is a desperate hope that you made the right choice. In a searing flash of light, the angel is torn from existence. For a moment, you see it tumbling into the fractal madness of the void just before the rip in reality snaps shut. The cradle lurches around you. Without its power source, it has begun to plummet back to the Underlands. It is only thanks to the nimble piloting of Jack Basalt that you are rescued from the wreckage. Ignoring her frantic protests, you shove Baylor on the craft as well, and the three of you watch the cradle fall below the clouds. You are silent on the journey back, thinking only of Orla, the Duchess, and Caxton Frost, for whom the cradle will forever be a tomb. With your penitence fulfilled, you are released from the Inquisition. Free at last, you set off alone, caring not where the wind takes you. In the years that follow, tales are told around the Sky Realms of a lone wanderer whose very presence seems to put strange events in motion. Jack Basalt retires from mercenary work and spends the rest of his days drifting from tavern to tavern, drunkenly rambling of his bygone exploits. With time, the names of his former comrades are forgotten and he is regarded as just another old fool. Frost never marries his lover, Samuel. He remains a traitor in the eyes of his homeland. The Duchess, shredded and scattered to the winds, finds a strange new peace as a fractured witness to the secret life of the Underlands. The Embarian's armor lies, unrusting, at the base of the world, while her flesh returns to the soil. Their sacrifice is recorded on the jet black memorial obelisk that stands in the gardens of the Citadel of Doubt in Riova. In time, the apostatic union is able to wrest control of Hallowshire from the Wiccan covens. The region enjoys a new era of stability and lawfulness, though despite many pleas for aid to the Union mainland, the famine drags on for several years. And in neighboring Pwyll, the next scry shroom harvest is plentiful indeed, though the mood is somber 
for the villagers know the blood price that was paid. By calming the entombed one's rage, you ensure that the Queen of Silver will reign over the endless realm for many a century more, while her subjects rest safely in the quiet gloom of their mausoleums. But soon, it is made apparent that the Endless's flesh farms are an untenable form of sustenance. Lord Ridder is able to convince the Endless to resume the Cadaver Crusades, and the Endless feast upon mortal flesh once more. The Apostatic Union retaliates with a declaration of war, and the full wrath of the Union Navy is brought down upon Sepulchre, raising it to the ground. With your help, the Clockwork King dies without an heir, and its courtiers are violently deposed. Though many citizens perish in that first brutal winter, this time a natural spring follows in its wake, along with a blossoming sense of mutual solidarity. The saboteur's leadership ensures that people meet the crisis together and soon the old songs, all the old songs, return to the tea rooms and temples. It also creates a safe haven for crooks and black marketeers, who swiftly become indispensable to society. In response, the Union moves troops in from Hallowshire and occupies the island, announcing its intention to restore law and order. A long resistance struggle concludes with the declaration of New Cardova as a freebooting, fractious nomad republic. With Vela defeated, the chains that bound your mysterious benefactor shatter, freeing the entity at last. You never cross paths with it again. And as for Vela, you shared few words during your escape. The next day, she was gone, and none have seen or heard from her since. I'll let the credits play and then I will give my thoughts. I think you guys already have a good idea of my thoughts, though. Thanks for playing and stay deluded. All right. Uh, so I loved that game a lot. Um, I loved the world. It's so pretty. It's so darkly beautiful. Cannot rave about it enough. Uh, there's so much cool stuff in here. There are so many cool quests. The world is like fleshed out and has cool development. And those little pockets of like ideology, those little pockets of like uh, emotion and those those small stories that you just kind of stumble upon. So good. Um, I really wish that there was fast travel. I feel like a lot of my time towards the end of the game is just traversing uh, places. And it's not like it's a huge deal because it's not like it's the size of a Bethesda game or uh, an Obsidian, Obsidian game. 
uh, but it still would be nice to have that option to just be able to zap between place A and place B. Um, I feel like the Endless Realm was the one I was most conflicted about. Uh, it felt like a lot of the uh, solutions on the Endless Realm were just have more charm. Um, and I don't really think that that is super um, solid of a gameplay mechanic uh, when you have different uh, different tools that people could be using as, as solutions. So yeah, a lot of it could be uh, charm based, right? You talk to the people in the court, you talk to the queen, you talk to the ghost, all that stuff. But you should still have those little solutions that aren't based on charm. You should have a solution where you fight through a room of people and then get to the end and there's a solution there. Maybe it's like the necklace that you find. Uh, you should have a solution where it's like um, you break into a, a bar or you break into a building and you find something that reminds the ghost of her father, um, something like that. Uh, there should be multiple solutions to that kind of problem. Um, I really liked the the way that the stories kind of culminated uh, because especially with the Endless Realm, I didn't know if I was making the right choice there. Um, and I kind of want to go back and make the other choice now because it sounds like the, the Cadaver Crusades are going to start again. I don't want to be responsible for that. Uh, the, the Angel, uh, that choice was really nerve wracking. Uh, I wasn't sure if I was making the right choice when I made it. Um, because uh, I feel like as my character, I would want to bring back Orle. I would want to bring back uh, Caxton Frost. I would want to bring back the Duchess. Uh, I would want to, as my character, like make the other decision. I made the decision to banish the angel because I felt like the angel didn't belong in our reality um, and I felt like it was the best option for the angel and for our reality. But I, I still don't know if that's the right choice. Like, that's really good writing. That's really, uh, really hard to pull off. And I feel like you guys pulled that off. Um, yeah, uh, I have so many good thoughts about this. I cannot rave about Dread Delusion enough. Um, I like the world. I like the writing. I like the... Um, I like the gameplay loop. Uh, I liked exploring. I like the, um, you guys have that uh, pick a direction, just walk in it uh, from the start uh, and you'll find something. And I really like that style of game development and that style of level design, uh, where if you just walk in any direction, you'll find something. Um, that didn't work again in the Endless Realm. Uh, one of the minds that we just kind of stumbled upon with the, the goddess, the crystal goddess. Uh, I never found the person that starts that quest. Uh, so I don't know what the quest was supposed to be. Uh, it felt to me like you find this mine, you walk into it, you realize that uh, there's a, a goddess. Uh, somebody has built a goddess. Uh, the goddess is uh, corrupting people, causing them to lose their minds and serve her. You go down, it gives you the choice, do you really want to kill the goddess? And I'm like, well, yeah, she's perverting people's wills. Uh, she's mind controlling people. Like, it should be the best option. Uh, but then the game kind of made it seem like it was a big, important choice. And I didn't really see why I shouldn't kill the crystal goddess. So things like that, uh, you could add a, like, uh, an NPC somewhere before the goddess and say, hey, uh, I'm the owner of the mine. Um, here's what's happening. Like, uh, I need you to uh, get the goddess for me so that I can take over this world. And you can be like, no, I'd rather destroy it, something like that. Um, that way, there's kind of like an ideological uh, stake to the, the whole storyline. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then that... Um, that final assault I really liked. Uh, I feel this is mostly uh, YouTuber Andrew talking. This is an actual gamer Andrew talking. I feel like it was very long. Uh, I I would have liked uh, to be able to streamline it a little bit more. Um, I didn't really 
uh, edit this one down. I took a few things out here and there, but for the most part, it was just straight gameplay from the game to YouTube. And it's very long. Uh, I was hoping to have it done in a week and it took me about two weeks. Um, so uh, yeah, just being able to know this is what I need to do to progress to the, the ending. Um, that would have been helpful uh, if I could have just made it a little bit faster and gone through a little bit faster. Uh, that's YouTuber Andrew talking. That's not Gamer Andrew talking. Gamer and Andrew thinks that this is a great length for a game um, and really appreciates the work that you've done on this. Um, and yeah, I, I think that's everything. Um, yeah. I'm going to get out of here. Thank you all for joining me for another night of strange and spooky games. Uh, this time it turned into multiple nights. So I want to thank especially everyone who stuck around for the entire game. Uh, I love you guys so much. Thank you. Have a great night. And I will see you in the next video.